and welcome to Stronger Together, the series from Microsoft for Startups, where we interview leaders from startups to discuss how they're addressing the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm David Smith. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And today we're joined by Dr. Fiona Edwards-Murphy, CEO and co-founder of Apis Protect. Welcome, Fiona. It's great to have you. Hi, David. Thanks. It's so great to be on. Good good to have you. And as we're recording this, it's uh, late May 2020. And as you know, of course, COVID-19 is still active in many parts of the world. So where are you right now, Fiona, and how are you doing? Okay, so we're based in um, Cork in the very south of Ireland. And um, obviously, uh, like a lot of places, we've had um, a lot of um, lockdowns and sudden changes in our, our setup. Uh, our entire team has had to start working remotely because uh, the, the actual building where our office is uh, was shut down completely. Oh, wow. um, so it, it's been a, a big, a very sudden change. But um, luckily for us, we're, we spend a lot of time traveling. A lot of members of our team travel all over the world regularly. So um, we're well set up for remote working. We use a lot of like that video calls for team meetings, you know, using um, chat and stuff like that to, to keep in contact with each other. Um, and luckily, I like, at, I think like two days before the lockdown was very suddenly announced, um, we uh, had done a practice work from home day where everybody took all of their equipment and everything home with them to, to test it out. So it was kind of like a perfectly timed test. Um, so we've, we've been doing we've been doing really well and we've gotten some really important projects that uh, we had scheduled for March and April across the line. So that's been great. Great. Sounds like you are well prepared for all of this. Well, tell me a little bit about your background and what APIS Protect is and what it does. Yeah, sure. Uh, so what we do at Apis Protect is we help to uh, safeguard about a third of the food that you eat every day. Uh, so a whole host of crops, uh, things like almonds, avocados, blueberries, cranberries are actually given to us by a honeybee pollination. And um, I think everybody knows about the, the huge problems that bees have been experiencing over the last kind of 30, 20, 30 years. Um, there are diseases, pests, problems happening all over the world now. Um, and like basically uh, the bees in America are experiencing the problems from the bees in Europe and the bees in Asia are contributing some more, you know, like basically we've spread the bees around the world and spread all the problems around the world at the same time. And um, what we do at Apis Protect is to help beekeepers, uh, so um, industrial beekeepers, to um, improve their productivity and reduce their problems in their hives. And how we do that is using an Internet of Things solution. Uh, we have a uh, sensor platform that goes inside the beehive. It's about the size of a deck of cards, so it fits into kind of a traditional beehive without having to change anything about the layout. And we collect uh, data points like temperature, humidity, sound levels inside in the beehive. And we use machine learning then to, to um, convert that into to actual insightful information about beehives rather than just raw data. And um, we tell the beekeepers like where their large hives are, where their small hives are, which hives have died, because that's important to know, and uh, which hives are, are, are being more productive than other ones. And essentially what that becomes for an industrial beekeeper is a, a management tool for their operation. We, you know, it's kind of a, how they can use their labor materials, transport um, much more effectively so they can actually concentrate their efforts on beehives that require their attention. Uh, because up until now, um, essentially beekeeping still works the same way it did in the Middle Ages, where you just kind of go out, you put on your suit and you start opening beehives and trying to find a problem. And then you start trying to fix the problem, whereas right. we kind of skip that whole finding the problem stage. So rather than that manual, that manual process, it sounds like this is IoT for bees. And exactly. uh, this is an important problem. I've experienced this myself. I'm growing cucumbers on my deck and I have to hand pollinate them because otherwise yes. I don't get any fruit. Um, <laughs> So tell me a little bit about how um, beekeepers have responded to this. How's it going? It's been it's been fantastic. So we um, founded Apes Protect back in uh, February of 2017. So we're just over over three years old now, and we've really gone from strength to strength. So uh, we started out in 2017, kind of like a tiny team in Cork in Ireland, um, kind of trying our best. And since then, we've gotten to, we've got a team of 10 now based in Cork. Uh, we have beehives all over the world. We're monitoring 20 million honeybees um, as of a couple of months ago and um, monitoring beehives all over the world, the majority of them in, in the US and then also some in Ireland, some in the UK and some in South Africa, which was a really interesting project. Okay. And of course, like everything changed a couple of months ago when this disease started coming around. So how has that affected your business and your plans? 
Yeah, so it's been it's been a very dramatic change. So um, our first um, customer segment that we're going after are the the pollination beekeepers in the US. So these are really really large beekeeping operations where they're trying to scale up to tens of thousands of beehives. So obviously, um, that's the kind of operation that our kind of technology can really help improve. But um, those beekeepers have been experiencing massive problems. So you're talking about um, you know you might be keeping your bees somewhere like on the east coast. So you could be keeping your bees most of the time in somewhere like um, the Carolinas and then you're trying to bring your beehives to California to Mm -hmm. the almond pollination event which is the that's like the Super Bowl of beekeeping everybody always calls it Um, it's um, you know the month of February uh, two thirds of the beehives in the United States spend um, uh, February in California and while they were in California COVID-19 turns up changes everything. California gets locked down. Uh, all of the, the laborers that these operations have, a lot of them had gone to California as well. So they were locked down in California wow. and even just trying to get the beehives back out because once that almond bloom ends, you've got, uh, you know, once those flowers from the almond trees have, have gone away, there's very little food there for the bees. So you need to get it's them back out. one window them- to do it, I guess. Yeah. Exactly, yes. You're trying to get that pollination done, get your beehives out and start the work. So the minute you're finished with the almond pollination, you start preparing for next year's almond pollination. You start splitting beehives. You start trying to ramp up the number of bees that you have available for next year. And that's what those beekeepers are trying to do at the moment with um, their labor, trying to you know, do uh, social distancing correctly, trying to move beehives across state lines, trying to move people across state lines. And um, it's it's been very challenging. And a lot of those um, splits and those work that work that will be impacting next year's production has been severely impacted. And that's where um, APIS Protect um, can really help uh, because ultimately we're a labor management tool. So um, we're really hoping that, um, you know, that we can really help the beekeepers that we're working with right now handle this crisis maybe a a bit better than they would have otherwise. Um, So that's that's an an exciting part for us at the moment. Right. And what about for you and your team? Like what changes have you had to make uh, in response? (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, first of all, the everybody going home and working remotely has been a, a major challenge. So you're trying to, you know, make sure that everybody's set up, everybody's still, you know, well connected within the team and able to do their work. Uh, but as well, I mean, like obviously, since our, our our primary customers are all in the United States and there's a travel ban at the moment between yeah. Europe and the United States, uh, it's been a really interesting for us uh, to try to adapt our process. So we're at the stage now where we're almost completely focused on scaling up in the US. So um, suddenly being unable to meet beekeepers who, as you can imagine, are quite a kind of a traditional group of people. They definitely video calls and stuff like that are brand new to them right now. And we're trying to, you know, you've got that extra barrier now between us and our customers in terms yeah. of communication and getting our message across. So we've been focusing an awful lot on um, trying to um, create material like um, around uh, conveying the value of our product. And uh, we're working on some videos and stuff like that as well at the moment, which which is it's really helping. Yeah. Okay. Got any interesting stories from this process? Any surprises of, you know, this whole change in work that's come about? Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, but I think what, what's what been uh, really, really um, great is that just seeing how well um, we as a team in terms of our technical delivery and stuff like that uh, has continued mm. during uh, during a time when definitely like there was the opportunity there for everything to just fall apart for a little bit technically. Yeah. Uh, the team has been really fantastic at like, you know, st- mm mucking in um, remotely and setting up uh, like we've got um, devices being tested in people's back gardens and <laughs> it's like they're like uh, brothers and sisters bedrooms and stuff like that it's all it's all progressing away we'll, we'll we're managing the health and safety side of it but um, it's been everybody's been really really um, um, working so hard and adapting so well to the change it's been it's right. been brilliant tell me a bit more about that testing process in people's backyards like why have you had to change to that <laughs> Yeah, so well, um, what we do usually is um, in our office, or obviously because we've got a hardware product, there's an awful lot of like physical testing and like, you know, here, turn it on and run down the road and see if it's still talking to the base station and stuff like that. Uh, but, um, you know, all of that, we're at a really crucial time when it comes to that and also testing our ability to scale. So we're looking at going from, you know, hundreds of devices this year to thousands of devices in the, wow. in the space of a couple of months. So that's been a, a, a real, like, you know, it's been a, a great challenge, but it's it's been great how it's been going quite well, which is good. But it was obviously an opportunity for for things to to not go so well. Um, so basically, um, one of the lads has 
um, I think he's got 15 devices running at, at, at one time all the time on his desk at home and he sent us a picture and there's like a Lego Hogwarts in the background and stuff like that. So it's <laughs> it's been quite fun. That's great. And I know Apis Protect is uh, part of the Microsoft for Startups program. And how has that sort of um, helped you out in this situation? Yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, like Microsoft has really been um, a fantastic. The, the the Microsoft for Startups program has been brilliant especially around that scaling piece that I was just talking about. So uh, one of the things that we were particularly stressed out about was the idea of going to thousands and then potentially eventually hundreds of thousands of devices. Uh, but it's been it's been brilliant. We got some great support around, you know, uh, we just rang them up. So it's Andy on our software development team um, who's been um, dealing mostly with the, the technical stuff. And he was like, OK, I've got a meeting set up tomorrow to, to talk about this uh, this problem with, with Microsoft. And um, then the next day we had a team meeting after that meeting. He was like, hey, it's all fixed. <laughs> so that wow. was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So um, just about because we have, uh, we're not sending an awful an awful lot of data in terms of per device. We're just collecting, you know, simple things like, you know, temperature measurements, mm -hmm. uh, humidity measurements. But it's the volume of data that we send at one time. You know, if you're collecting temperature from thousands of points at the right. same time, that's, that's the challenge. And, um, you know, uh, Andy's really been talking about how um, we, it's going to help us, uh, this program is really going to help us expand our infrastructure and keep um, providing our services at the level that we know we can provide um, at scale once we've got lots of beekeepers in, in with us. All right. Well, that's really great to hear. Yeah. So, so there have been a lot of short-term changes, of course, you know, because of the impact of COVID-19. But do you think there are going to be long-term changes for your business as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think that the, the big thing that this has driven us to do is um, work out how our technology can be um, installed and managed and uh, get the beekeeper set up with our technology completely remotely. So the, the hardware side of that has been really challenging around. Um, so ultimately, obviously, we always wanted our devices to be something that can be self-installed self by the beekeepers. Like we have kind of visions of, you know, they just take it out of the box, pull off something uh, like a mm -hmm. piece of sticky tape and stick it on the beehive and walk away and that's it. But we always kind of treated that as kind of like, that's the aspiration. Realistically, for the next couple of years, we're going to be, you know, following these things probably around the world a bit uh, right. but now that's not an option so we have to get to that next level faster and sooner than than we expected um but i, I we're we're getting there we're getting there um it's to, you still have to install it with a screwdriver i haven't found my magic i, I was thinking like velcro or something like that yeah. but um haven't quite got there but um it's making our technology self-installed remotely making mm -hmm. the the onboarding process with the beekeepers completely remote that's been really the the, the technical and the long-term change to our business um so it almost sounds like this pandemic has accelerated your plans yeah absolutely it's kind of pushed us down the 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 technology development path uh, faster than I expected and also down the business model development path faster. I mean, like, I guess it's kind of like, you know, the way everybody always talks about how when when in, t in times of crisis, like when wars are happening and stuff like that, all, all of these kind of things accelerate so fast. And I think we're really seeing that at the moment uh, at Apes Protect. All right. And it sounds like there are some good lessons in here. And sort of as a CEO, I mean, is there something you've learned from this experience that you could maybe share with other CEOs that might be watching? Yeah, I think there's kind of there's two points probably. Um, first of all, it's um, the trust your team <laughs> that um, when you've built, um, you can. What I've really seen is when you've built a, a really good team that you can really trust and rely on um, during crisis, they'll really come through, and that's been that's been amazing. And then the second thing is probably stay calm. <laughs> there is a way to solve everything, um, and you know you can get around it. It's just kind of stay calm, carry on stay calm and carry on that, that uh, great sorry, advice yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so lastly for anybody who's interested in learning more about APS APIS protect where can they find you so uh, we have our website, which is www.apisprotect.com. And we're also on all the social media platforms that are out there, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. We're always at Apis Protect. So anyone who's interested, uh, they can sign up to our newsletter on our website where we share all of our tales of our adventures all over the world uh, once a month, which I think I think it's fun. Of course, yeah, I think and it's, it's such fun, an interesting think, story. I yeah. think it's really worth checking out. And yeah. thank you so much for sharing with that with us. Uh, thank you for protecting the bees and thank you for protecting <laughs> our food supply. And stay safe. Thanks again. Thanks so much.